What is up, MMA fans? This is Tudor Leonte for Sherdot.com. And today I have the pleasure to talk with former UFC title contender and now bar knuckle boxing fighter, Mr. John Dodson. Hello, sir. How are you today? Oh, man, I'm doing awesome. It's a great morning. I'm going to go out there and get some training in. As soon as I get done with that, I'm going to go pick up these tickets for the big, uh, these BKFC tech fights. Yeah, uh, it sure looks like an amazing morning. Are you at home right now, right? Yeah, I'm in my backyard. Wow, it, it looks very, very nice. Congrats on that. Um, uh, before we start talking about you know your upcoming fight, I would like to ask you something. Last year, by this time, you were involved in a very nasty car accident. Um, eventually, everything turned out for the best. But what's your recollection from that moment? Man, I just thought I just killed my whole family and I, because I, I knew I was still alive, but I didn't know that they were going to be alive. So I was like, man, who the hell, who the, who leaves their car out in the middle of the road and just sit there in pitch black dark, don't push it out of the way and have no hazards or no flares or nothing at, at all. And the guy was sitting there saying that, uh, the cops that, that came and picked us up in the ambulance said that the guy took off on foot and just fled. So he just left his car on the highway. And I was like, man, this is why people need to be more responsible. Like he, that guy hit a semi truck and then he got stalled out in the middle of the road. And then he looked like he killed us. And then he just bailed it, he booked it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, that. I'm glad that eventually, you know, you're fine. Your family is fine as well. And uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but it happened immediately after you were released from your UFC contract, right? Yeah, uh, I actually got released in, in October and then in July came through. We were just signing a fight to go fight in XMA. And I was supposed to fight Cody Gibson. And then we had to postpone that fight because just because the car accident. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The, I mean, those were some crazy, crazy times for you. Right now, instead, you are scheduled to make your BFK, B, BKFC, sorry, debut against fellow UFC alum Ryan Benoit at the upcoming BKFC 28 on, on August the 27th. Um, are you still training at Jackson Wink MMA? Yes, I'm training over there, training Jackson Ackerman. I'm also teaching over at United Fit. So everything that I'm going to do is basically be around everybody that I've been working with and honing my skills with. And I actually went back to my original boxing coach with Max Heyman. You obviously have plenty of experience in combat sports, but still, I would like to ask you, how have you changed your training schedule in preparation for your debut in a new discipline? Uh I've been keeping my training, same training schedule to make sure that I can do everything as much as I can. It's all just going to be more evolved and just straighten my hands. So I'm using more of my mixed martial arts ability, if being close to distance, being able to do that, but also be securing more of my striking power. My striking discipline has been more with my hands anyway, since so versus somebody I'm using with my, with my kicks. Anybody who's going to watch any of my fights are like, oh, yeah, John knocks everybody out with their hands. I was like, yeah, this is a chance I get to do it. It's a great opportunity for me to go ahead and showcase that other side of me, the more vicious side without having to worry about, worry about no takedowns, no jujitsu, no anything else like that. I'm expecting Ryan Benoit to go ahead and like pretty much close the distance, cuddle with me a lot because he's not going to like the fact that I'm going to touch him one too many times and before he gets knocked out. And uh, what do you expect in general, you know, about competing on a ring uh, in a new discipline and uh, without gloves? Well, I've been fighting without gloves when I was so much when I was younger anyway, so it's not going to be really that much of a difference. Only thing is that it's going to be on the same skill set. Well, I guess back then it was the same skill set too because I didn't know how to fight back when I was a kid. And fighting bare knuckle now, it's going to be the same thing too. I mean, fighting a guy who has the same type of discipline as I do has pretty much the same skill level. The only thing that's, that's going to be a different factor is that I'm going to be way faster and hit way harder than he does. When you say that you used to fight bare knuckle, uh, do you mean that your first MMA fights uh, took, you know, in sort of Valley Tudo, or do you mean like street fights? <clears throat> well, I meant street fights. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I was just wanted to make sure, but didn't want to ask directly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was all street fighting, you know. I mean, technically, if you call those street fights, they're all going to be Valley Tudo matches. I mean, as anything goes. <laughs> 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 you're right you're right but touche, touche. 
So, um, what about your corner? Who's going to be in your corner for this one? It's going to be a unique experience because of the fact that my corner man is actually fighting the on the same night, and it's my younger brother. So I'm going to go corner him, and then he's going to go and corner me. And then we have another uh, buddy that's uh, one of our our striking coaches. He's going to be cornering us as well, Max Heyman and uh, Nick Gonzalez. Uh, I guess that's going to be quite an experience, you know, to be cornering your brother and then to to be cornered by him. Yeah, because like my brother's been like that dude who's this unseen mystery that nobody's ever seen yet. Like my brother has fought, well, I haven't really fought. He's been training me so I can go ahead and help out and get so become so successful in the UFC and all throughout my MMA career. That he wanted to join to do bare knuckle. And I was like, dude, this is what you want to do. This is the style fight that you want to take on. He's like, he's like absolutely. So now he gets to make an opportunity to go ahead and make a name for himself versus just help me out all the time. Um, I'd like to ask your opinion on this one and uh, it, it, about the fact that more and more MMA fighters opt to transition to barnacle boxing. Why does it happen, in your opinion? To tell you the truth, the easiest answer is going to be probably doing it just for the money. A lot of people who go into bare knuckle like the fact that it's a new dangerous avenue, but at the same time, we want to still be able to live to secure the same lifestyle that we once had. And you see all UFC fighters pretty much want to make, continue making that same kind of money and bare knuckles is the best way to go about it right now. Okay, I'm guessing that Bastir, I believe there are, you know, plenty of MMA promotions who would pay you, you know, pay you the money to have you enrolled on their rosters. So, but it's not just, you know, about, about you. I, I see a lot of, I see a lot of, a sort of trend, you know, of MMA fighters uh, competing in bare knuckle boxing. I was just curious. Yeah, I just, my take on it was because, well, one, my brother wanted to fight in bare knuckle, so. If he wanted to do it, I was going to go do the journey with him. And then the other one was, um, I still want to live in this house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to uh, work a real job. That's the real thing. I, I want to sit there and be satisfied doing pursuing a career that feels more fulfilling to myself. And fighting is the best avenue that I have. And that's like the only thing that I really know how to do. And I want to make continue to bank on it as, as long as I can. You Now that you mentioned a full-time job, when was that you quit your your full-time job to co dedicate completely on combat sports in general, if you remember? The last time I had a full-time job was when I was a, a manager at Chuck E. Cheese. And that was when I was 18 years old. Okay, so... Uh, 20 years. <laughs> yeah, that's quite, quite a lot of time. Uh, it's also, you know, I mean... I speak to a lot of fighters and some someone really struggles, you know, to pay the bills, even though they compete at the highest level, um, you know, and, you know, it's curious to, to hear their stories and why they have to have another uh, job in addition to competing. Well, no, because I, I do this, I teach and I just teaching for me, I don't really count that as a job. Like I like helping out new fighters and new people and pretty much anybody that wants to learn the sport of MMA. Like if they want to learn jujitsu, wrestling, any aspect of like the striking part, because striking is like my main thing. I always help everyone out. So I don't consider that to be work. Same thing with doing like stuntman. Like I'm a stuntman and I work on a bunch of films out here in Albuquerque. So they're like anything that they need me to do. I'm like, all right, cool. You want me to get blown up? You need me to run through a building? You need me to do triple flips off of a skyscraper? Cool. I can do all that crazy stuff. But those aren't for me considered to be jobs. Like this fighting, like me even go to a bare knuckle right now, this, I don't consider that to be a job. I'm going to go out there and do something I love. And I love to hit somebody on another aspect of fighting. And that's the thing that like pretty much gets my blood going. Yeah, yeah I understand. I understand. Uh, do you have any regrets from your UFC career? Uh, the only regret is that I didn't get a UFC title. I got the title of being the Ultimate Fighter champion, the first season 14 champion. But the, the one that I really wanted is I wanted one of those belts. So hopefully I can go ahead and knock out as many people in the bare knuckle at 125 since my since I'm becoming back down to flyweight. That USC might recognize, hey, uh, John might be still a dangerous threat at 125 or with any other organization. Like if I can go to 1FC, Risen, I'm down to take it whatever I can. Uh, are you still interested, of course, to compete in MMA again, uh, you know, 
in the future. Of course, MMA is like still going to be one part of the things that I need to go ahead and do and take care of for the rest of my life. So if M if an MMA fight comes through, I got to go take it just because of the fact that I still have those goals of being a pretty much a mixed martial arts champion. And now that you mentioned that you're back at flyweight, is that the weight category where you feel at your best? That's the weight category. Yes, that's what the weight class I feel like I am pretty much dominated in. That's the one weight class that I haven't been losing in. And I went to 135 because I wanted to go ahead and not cut weight that much. I didn't want to cut weight at all. And then now I'm starting to regret it. That's like the one thing I should just stay that flyway. And then I could have been sitting there fighting. I could have been the champion right now. Demetrius Johnson left and Henry Segudo would have been the guy that I had to beat. And then he ended up becoming a double champ and leaving. So I didn't have a chance to go ahead and make my name for myself yet. So, um, Yeah, you know, and there was a time actually when the UFC seemed to be really close, really close, to, sorry for the uh, play words, to close, you know, to close the, the flyweight division. But then things eventually, you know, turn out for the best. And right now, perhaps it's one of the most interesting uh, weight classes in, in the UFC. Yeah, it is one of the most interesting weight classes. And I'm glad the fact that the UFC didn't close it. I mean, flyweight gives a lot of avenue for a lot of people who want to make it big but they can't because everybody who sits there and says the greatest fighters are all the heavyweights. No, that's just the strongest guys. Like they might be the world's most dangerous fighters, but the world's most intelligent fighters is at the one at the flyweight division. They are the ones who are more technical, more skilled and have to go ahead and know every nook and cranny before they have to get hit. Um, last one. Um, are, are you still pursuing perhaps a rematch with Demetrius Johnson or an occasion to face him again? Look, if they ever give me the opportunity to fight Demetrius Johnson again, it'd be amazing because of the fact that I feel like I'm going to be like Rampage versus Vandalay Silva. The third time is definitely going to be the charm. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it will happen again. You know, you never know in MMA, any, everything can happen. Uh, John, I finished my questions. Do you have any last messages you would like to share with us today? Hey, you guys, make sure you watch me on BKFC August 27th. I'm going to go out there and make my, my, UFC, my BKFC debut against Ryan Benoit. He's just going to go ahead and catch these hands. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to leave a bloody mess and I'm going to come out looking as beautiful as ever. <laughs> you hear the Fondi magician himself. Thank you for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with your upcoming fight and hopefully I will hear again from you in the future. Oh, thank you, brother. I can't wait to talk to you again. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.